When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned and fasted and prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who brings his covenant of unfailing love. Think about what you do at church. You sit, you listen, you sing. Maybe you talk to a friend and you go home. Come back a week later and do it all again. If we describe church by just what we do, that'd be it. You sit, you listen, you speak, and you go home and you repeat. Laws and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. The more people who are sitting in pews, the better our church. At least that's the running logic. That's pretty far from the first church where people used to give away all their stuff. They relied on each other for survival. They threatened religious and political establishments by being a peaceful people. Even in the face of resistance though, their numbers grew and grew. We are your servants, the people you rescued by your great- In the story of Nehemiah, some of the Jewish people tried returning to Jerusalem from living in exile, only to find their city destroyed. The wall had been demolished, and the wall was all about safety. Without a wall, cities had no chance. While Nehemiah had been living in Persia, his brother told him about the wall being destroyed. And Nehemiah wept and fasted for three days. His heart broke for the people because he knew they were in danger. With those who love him and obey his commands. What did Nehemiah do? He moved from his Persian home to Jerusalem. He didn't send a good note or money. He just went back, even though it was a long and dangerous journey. He didn't know where he'd live. He didn't know what he'd eat. He didn't even know if he'd survive. He left everything behind to restore God's family. I don't think the people outside our walls believe that we feel the same way about them. I don't think that they're convinced that we would leave everything behind to restore them to God. Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. We need a revolution. We need men and women willing to go outside the walls of their church and be with God's people, with all of God's people. We need courage, we need faith, we need hope. We need a new Nehemiah.